winds of change in the power sector. Europe's renewable energy industry is used to breaking records for generating more power from low carbon sources, but recent developments point to even more dramatic days to come. Vattenfall, the Swedish energy group, and Norway's Statoil were among the companies that took the market by surprise in late 2017 when they bid in the world's first exclusively subsidy-free wind auction held by the Dutch government. Many had thought the auction to be too challenging for offshore wind farm developers given the delivery date of 2022. The Dutch auction result is not a freak however, since there are similar landmark bids in a German offshore wind auction held in April 2017, when Orsted, the Danish energy giant, previously known as the Dong Energy, also offered to build schemes by 2024 that would rely on market power prices alone. The German and Dutch auctions have given policymakers across the continent hope that the industry's reliance on government guaranteed electricity prices could soon be coming to an end. Such subsidies are funded through consumer and industry energy bills, but investors, analysts and developers are yet to be convinced that subsidy-free offshore wind farms will become the new norm. There is also some scepticism about whether all of the subsidy-free bids submitted will be delivered. Ordstead's chief executive, Henrik Paulsen, has acknowledged investors' concerns when he said, We are well aware that our zero subsidy bid may have come earlier than that the market has expected, he told investors in a call in April shortly after the German auction. Orsted has said that it will not make a final investment decision on the German projects until early 2021. Although there is a financial penalty of 59 million euros associated with pulling out, Mr. Polson further stressed that should the business case not prove attractive in four years from now, we will abandon the projects and write off the value of the bid bond. Developers who have made subsidy-free bids are relying on rising wholesale electricity prices, further dramatic cost reductions in the industry and continued developments in wind turbine technology. The world's biggest and most powerful turbines at 8 megawatts each have recently been installed off the coast at Liverpool, whilst we will also shortly see 10 megawatt blades being installed in Germany, and GE is working on a 12 megawatt turbine. For the wind farm developers, the attraction of a bigger installed turbine is they reduce the quantity of foundations, cable and overall infrastructure. In the case of Vattenfall's subsidy-free bid, the site involved is close to another of the company's offshore wind farms, creating the opportunity for cost efficiency savings. Vattenfall believe the risks of the subsidy-free project can be reduced by striking long-term power supply contracts with large companies, known in the industry as Corporate Power Purchase Agreements, or PPAs. These are growing in popularity in Europe as large companies seek to reduce their carbon emissions and their energy bills. However, bankers say that the corporate PPA market in Europe is not yet as developed as that as we see in the US. Some in the sector have warned that existing investors in offshore wind farms, such as pension and infrastructure funds, are unlikely to want to take on the kind of exposure to market prices that subsidy-free bids entail. Vattenfall said that, for now at least, subsidy-free bids will depend on specific conditions that you might have on specific projects, such as wind and seabed conditions at a certain site, the distance to the shore, and whether a PPA market is developing in that country. This, of course, raises an interesting question as to whether or not we will start to see subsidy-free bids in other markets. Most probably not at this stage. In markets such as the UK, subsidy-free bids are further off the agenda because developers have to meet certain costs. Um, for example, connecting projects to the electricity grid. This, in contrast, is met by the grid operator in Holland. However, optimists argue that with subsidy-free offshore wind may still be the exception rather than the rule, the break with government funding is finally in sight, even if it may come for other forms of renewable energy first. The first solar power plant in the UK to be built without government support was opened in September 2017, and analysts suggest that subsidy-free onshore wind farm projects in Britain are close. To quote Alan Baker, Global Head of Power at SockGen, It is clear that the costs are now getting to a point where renewable projects, including offshore wind projects, based wholly on market prices, are becoming possible. With developers betting that power prices will rise as existing coal 
and nuclear plants are closed, along with aggressive rises in carbon prices. A world in which renewable power is the equal of existing technologies looks to be in sight. As Jimmy Dean said, I can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails to always reach my destination.